Thank you, Mami, for your kind introduction. Can everybody hear me well and see the PowerPoint? Yeah, awesome. So I, I want to thank you, Susani, and all the Indonesian team for putting together such an incredible conference, Connect. I can't imagine three years ago, about three years ago, when we had a meeting in Philippines conducted by Jesse and the Filipinos brothers and sisters that today, Susani and Jesse and all the planning team members, we have gathered almost, I heard almost 700, 800 uh, disciples from all over Asia. So it's really, to me, God is awesome. I'm amazed by how God worked through this community. And I appreciate brothers and sisters, all of you who are today to come and listen and, and, and participate in this conference. Today, I am honored to be invited by Susani to speak on how to overcome emotional challenges. At a time like this, when you know all over the world, we are every day, we hear troubles in many, many, many countries. Um, I just, when I became a Christian 30 years ago, my desire, of course, to be a disciple for Jesus, to, you know, to love God, but my wish actually just, I just want to have peace with God and have peace with one another and have a peaceful life. And hopefully at the end of my life, it will be, I will be peacefully go up to heaven. But you know what, sisters and brothers, to share, you know, you know what? Life as a Christian is not always a smooth ride to heaven. It's like this picture. It's going to be a long winding, winding road to in as long as we live on this earth. And Jesus in the Bible promised us and told us before he went up to heaven, when he was on this earth, he says, in this world, you will have trouble. John 16, 33. In this world, we all will face trouble. So is it a surprise that it seems like every day now we face or know someone who face or hear troubling stories around us all over the world? And uh, it is not a surprise because Jesus already told us in this world, we will face trouble. It's a fact of reality. So, and I was curious, uh, how many times trouble was mentioned in the Bible? So as usual, now we are using, I, I use Bible Gateway and I did some research. So trouble, trial, more than 200 times mentioned in the Bible. Look at fear, afraid, more than 540 times. And cry, mourn, weep, more than 400 times. Is it a surprise that, no, it is not a surprise because Jesus told us already in the Bible, in this world, we will face trouble. And God knows that we, you know, God knows we will face trouble. So, and suffering is not uncommon to God and the people in the Bible. I was looking, I was attending a conference uh, last week and in May, in Channel News Asia Singapore, there's an article in May 2021 that says that the past, last year, three months, it's, we, we had a, a partial lockdown in Singapore. It says that SOS Singapore received more than 10,000 calls of distress call, which is a 36% increase of, of calls that came to that SOS. So it has been proven that during this time, emotional stress has increased exponentially. And even many godly men and women in the Bible suffered emotional challenges. So no matter what you're struggling with, sometimes it's easy to feel like, oh, I'm the only one. I've ever felt like that. No one understood me. But the fact is God knows more about depression, anxiety, despair, sadness, more than anyone else in the world. So below, I'll just show you some of the, you, you, you probably know, 
These are just some godly men and women in the Bible who suffered emotional challenges, whether by childlessness or marriage crisis or the loss of their loved ones like Naomi losing her husband and two sons and um, Job losing everything and King David of course he was the writer of Psalm the book of Psalm and he knows about emotion more than anyone so today I'm going to I'm just going to dig a little bit deeper about King David he was the writer of Psalm and maybe he was one of the most emotional men in the whole Bible. His emotion went up and down and up and down. One minute he said, oh God, I want to praise you. If there's one thing I want to ask, I want to dwell in your house. And another minute he said, where are you God? He feels like God has turned his back on him and claimed that his life is full of depression and sadness. In Psalm 6, 6 to 7, he said this in the book of Psalm, I am worn out from sobbing. All night I flood my bed with weeping, drenching it with tears. My vision is blurred by grief. My eyes are worn out because of all enemies. And yet, in the Bible, God called David the man after his own heart. He is David. King David is a man after God's own heart. But he's a very emotional man. And uh, so... If we are an emotional person, if we go through emotional struggle, you may relate to King David. If you have ever felt exhausted from grief, even if you cannot sleep, because King David even was so distressed that he cannot sleep. He said he flood his bed with weeping and he was worn, exhausted, worn out from, from sobbing. But let's look at Psalm 40 verse 1 to 3. It says here that how did King David face his emotional struggle? I waited patiently for the Lord to help me, and he turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the pit of despair, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on solid ground and steadied me as I walked along. He has given me a new song to sing, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see what he has done and be amazed. They will put their trust in the Lord. When I look at King David, though he was a very emotional man, emotional man of God, he knew how to overcome and manage his emotion. Whenever he was really, really low, he cried out to God. He cried out to God. He waited patiently for the Lord. He, and then God will lift him up from the lowest pit to a rock ground place. He was despair in the mud. And after that, God will give him a new song to sing. You know, King David, he was a singer. He was a musician. But after he went through his valley of darkness and came out from the valley of darkness, God gave him a new song to sing. And after that, God will use him as his testimony to testify for people. Because after that, many will see what he has done and put trust in the Lord. So today, how do we manage our emotional challenges? I use the, the term manage, even though I was given the title overcome. Because when I think of overcome, I'm thinking of you just overcome the challenges and then it's over. But that's not the reality, right? Reality is our emotional challenges will be there as long as we live. So we need to learn how to manage it. So I want to share three points today. How do we manage emotional, our emotional challenges? Firstly, remember God's loving promises. Secondly, take time to reflect. And then the last one, practicals to cope with challenges. So I hope you are with me still, sisters and brothers. So let me share three points here. Remember God's loving promises. Look at these verses here. I love these verses. When I was down, emotional, these verses encouraged me. Exodus 15, 26. I am the Lord who heals you. Genesis 15. I am with you. Do not be afraid for I will protect you. 
Psalm 34, 18, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. Psalm 146, verse 9, God cares for the orphans and widows. Psalm 146, verse 8, the Lord lifts up those who are weighed down. Psalm 147, verse 3, he heals the brokenhearted and bandages their wounds. You know, sisters and brothers, there are many, many more verses that told us that God loves us. God cares for us. God wants to heal us. And God wants to comfort us when we go through our emotional struggle. Again, I was curious. I did some research again and find this. Look at, look at all these verses. Look at all these words that mentioned in the Bible. Love was mentioned 686 times. Heart, seven, more, than seven, more than 700 times. And I will be with you more than 280 times. And rest. God wants us to be, to be restful 500 times and rescue and save more, more than 420 times. And so I'm encouraged when I look at this, you know. So how do we remember God's loving promises? How do we remember? By daily devotional, you know, by our Bible reading and by memorizing scriptures. Maybe you have some ways that, you know, you know how to remember God's loving promises. Maybe you can paste notes of the Bible in your wall in the room. There are many ways. But every day we can do our daily devotional. I just want to share a little bit. In 2009, when I went through my marriage crisis, I was at the lowest emotional time of my life. I was at the low. And I have only energy at that time to read one book of Psalm a day. And that's enough because that's one Psalm a day that I read and put it in the journal and process my pain that helped me to go through that day for that day. And I did that for many, many months until my heart was healed. And there was one thing I prayed to God in that time. I just prayed, God, if there's anything you can help me, Please provide healing for me and my children. That's the number one thing I prayed for because I needed healing that time. So secondly, take time to reflect. Every day when we wake up, sisters and brothers, I know we are all busy people, right? Do you know how you feel emotionally? Or even now, if I ask you, how are you feeling emotionally? You know, are we... Of course, now we are excited because we attend this AS2 conference, Connect. But sometimes we are worried, right? Sometimes we are overwhelmed. Sometimes we can be even conflicted in our heart. I know recently, the past three months, I, I had to battle with emotional struggle, which I'll share with you a bit later. And uh, Jesus said in this verse, in John 8, 31 and 32, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciple. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. I understand this as if we know the truth about God, about the Bible, and about his word, yes. And if we obey, it will set us free. But I also take this as if we know the truth about our hearts and ourselves, it will also liberate us. So King David in Psalm 139, verse 23, also ask God to search his heart. He said, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties and see if there's any wicked, me, wicked way in me and lead me in a way everlasting. Even King David asked God to search his heart and, and, and find his, and search his heart and letting him know his emotion. And so besides reading one psalm a day in those low time emotionally, I did something too. I did my journaling. I always have a diary since I was a Christian until today. But in those few months, in my lowest time emotionally, I, you know, I, I wrote down and processed my pain in the journal. I wrote down, why am I so painful? Is it because... I feel abandoned? Is it because I felt betrayed? Is it because I felt rejected? 
Is it because I'm fearful to face this world alone? You know, to face my life alone, raise, raising up my children. So every day, besides reading that one psalm a day, I wrote down and processing and find and trying to find out, go deep in me, go deeper emotionally in me and find out why am I feeling so painful? Those are the times. And at the end of the journaling and processing my pain and putting it on the paper and leaving it there on the paper and releasing the pain, I felt liberated. And I felt I can came up with that session, feeling the strength for that day. And I do it again, every day, day in, day out, until I was healed. So I believe it is important for us to know ourselves, to be grounded in our emotions so that we can connect with God emotionally and we can connect with others and we can connect with our children emotionally. If you haven't done this, you know, previously, journaling, processing your emotion. These are just some questions that simple, simple question that you can do to start with. I do that all the time. I do it every day now. What am I grateful for last week, yesterday? You know, what am I grateful for? This is a powerful gratitude list. I, I just write down every people that I met, uh, things that I've accomplished, Bible verses that I've learned, lessons I've learned from people, you know, just anything, anything that came to your mind, just write it down. And what are my challenges in my relationship with God and others? Are there any conflicts or sins that I need to be open about? Because conflicts and sin can pull us down, can really pull our hearts down and make us feel heavy and burdened. And how do I want to grow coming out of these challenges? So these are just some simple questions you can ask yourself if you want to do journaling. You may have done it before. I will just write this down here, you know, to, to help you. So I just want to share here also, these are just some common causes of emotional challenges. If our basic needs not met, I'll share with you later. If there's any major life-changing events happening in our life, for example, the loss of our loved ones, or there's a health crisis, or there is a changes in financial status, or there is a loss of job, or marriage crisis, or any major living condition, any major changes in living condition, which is what we are facing now the past 20 months during COVID. We are all isolated. We had to wear masks. Now this conference become a Zoom. This is my first time I had to speak in front of you know, people in the computer. I'm not used to this, you know, this is my first time. But there are so many changes and this cause emotional stress, you know, and this also happened to us, secondary traumatic stress, meaning that we hear, we read, we see someone else in the other parts of the world facing stress, like the loss of their loved one or health crisis in other families. We are also stressful, actually, when we hear, when we see on TV, social media, newspaper, you know. And if there's any unresolved conflicts or any suppressed emotions or sins, these are some causes of emotional challenges. So there's a psychology called Abraham Maslow. You probably have heard if you understand, you know, if you've read about psychology. He came up with this theory called hierarchy of human needs. So he came up with five levels of needs for human beings. And he said, if our basic needs, like food, water, air, sleep, are not being met, it's hard for us to go and do big, big things. And for example, now, a lot of people are stressful and struggling with health, health crisis, financial crisis, maybe job, you know, job uncertainty. This will cause us some emotional struggle. So we, it's hard for anyone to fulfill the spiritual needs if our emotional needs is not being met, according to Maslow, which I believe so. I, I see myself when I have a lot of conflicts in my heart and, and a bad attitude, you know, and emotional struggle. It's hard for me to read the Bible and, 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 and really be close to God, right? If I have conflict or anger or sin in my heart, it's really hard for me to be close to God. So, you know, so this theory is, is useful. 
And this is another theory, another theory by two psychiatrists called Holmes and Ra. And they, they came up with this stress scale. And they came up with 43 major life changes events. And he put a score in each of the event and look at the 10 significant life events. The death of spouse, he's, he put it 100 points. Divorce, 73 points. And marital separation, marriage crisis, and death of a close family member is at the top five. So, you know, some of us here, we may have to, we may go, we may are, we are going through this. We may have gone through this and it is hard. I know I want to empathize with you, you know, Indonesian brothers and sisters. I know you have lost a few brothers and sisters in July and it is hard, you know, and in India as well. And, and so, and major life-changing events, like right now, what we are going through the past 20 months, this caused high stress scale. And he said, if your score, I don't put the score here, if your score is below 150, you are okay. You're in the mild level of stress. If it's between 150 to 300, you're moderate. But if it's 300 above, this is uh, highly stressed. So this is another one. And right now, I just want to share some practicals, right? Because we don't have, I only have 20 minutes. Susani only gave me 20 minutes. <laughs> okay, so I just want to share some practical. What I do in my daily life, to cope with, uh, to have an emotional wellness and emotional healthy life. It's something very simple, but I know if you do it, it doesn't cost anything, no money needed. It just take you your time and your intention. Okay, so the first one, some ways to, to, to cope with, uh, with emotional challenges. First one, I call it problem-based coping. This is a psychology term, but basically, simply, it means that you change the situation under your control. The thing that's not under your control, that the things that you cannot control, let it go. You know what I mean? For example, you want to be healthy, go exercise. You know, you want to, you want to be, you want to be less, you want to be less worried about COVID, stop reading the news. You know, I know in the beginning, when I, in the beginning of last year, when, when COVID just, just uh, started, every day I read the news and read the news and find out in different parts of the world how many cases of COVID happened. Until one day I said, I need to stop because this really made me very burdened and heavy hearted, right? So I stopped now. I stopped now. I don't know what's happening. Yeah, I, I don't even have TV, sisters and brothers, so I don't watch TV by the way. <laughs> and uh, so, I, you know, so if you want to limit bad news, turning off the news. And if you want to be feeling encouraged, you read the Bible. This is something under your control, under our control. If you want to be, have the positive attitude, surround yourself with positive, godly sisters and brothers. You know, build a great positive support, godly support network. This is something we can do and we can control. So the things that we cannot control, other people attitude, let's let, let it go because there's no point to, to you know to, to battle with it. So this is problem-based coping. Change the situation around you that you can be that you can under your control. Secondly, it's called emotion-based coping. It basically means change the internal emotional reaction. Change your emotion, your internal emotion. And there are some ways. Like again, you know, this is what I've read a lot and what I'm doing. Number one is journaling. There is a power of journaling by writing your thoughts and your emotion on the paper and release it. So I do that all the time. And uh, secondly, there is a power of talking. And if you need to, crying. And I feel very grateful as a Christian because we have a brothers and sisters that we can feel safe around us that when we struggle, we can say, can I give you a phone call? Just last week, I was troubled by something, you know, in my, in my life. I just called a sister and after talking for maybe 30 minutes, I felt so relieved. And you know why? Because science, scientists has researched that when you talk about your problem, 
you release your negative emotion. And then your body will, and you, when you cry, your body will be able to release a positive, good, feeling good chemical called oxytocin. Have you heard of it, sisters and brothers? Oxytocin and endorphins. So when we talk, we release it. And when we cry, somehow our body will release a feel good chemicals. And it is true. Last, a few weeks ago, I was very burdened. I was very burdened and feel unmotivated. And I didn't know why. Why, why am I feeling so unmotivated? Because usually I'm, a, I'm not a very, I can say I'm not a very emotional person, but I'm a goal setting person, you know. But for some reason this year, I feel weary, a bit restless. And after talking to two sisters, I just went down on my knee, on my knee, and I just cried out to God, listening to worship music. And I felt so close to God. I felt like God filled my heart with his love. So I do this a lot. And uh, I just want to talk a little bit on this. If something broke in our house, let's say computer broke, we can, bear, we can bring to repair shop, right? And fix it. And, but then if our heart broken, how do we bring? Where, which repair shop do we bring? We, we, there's no repair shop to fix our heart. There's no wrench or there's no tool. But you know, talking is a powerful tool. Talking about it. And um, even just speaking about our feelings out loud to another person can help. So why don't we do this, you know? And uh, sometimes I know as Asian women, or maybe men, we are, we are very afraid to burden people, right? We say, no, I don't want to burden that person. So we end up, usually we keep things in our heart. You know, that's, that's not what God wants. Because even Moses, remember in the Bible, Exodus, when he was fighting a battle, he can't do it himself. He has two friends two best friends who help him, which is Aaron and her, you know, and uh, pulling, his, pulling his hand to keep the battle winning. So we, we, do need to, we do need to build a godly support, safe network, safe community around us to be able to, you know, help us when we struggle. And I just want to say a little bit important tips for those who, of you who have the privilege of helping those who are struggling. Learn to be a good listener and learn to be an empathetic listener. This is empathy is something not many people know how to do. You know, now that I'm taking postgrad in counseling psychology, I'm surprised even counselors do not know how to do. Some counselors. And so in, the, in my module, there's one topic called empathy, meaning that we put ourselves in that person's shoe. We, we put ourselves in that person's shoe without judgment. So I just want to give this because recently I was talking to someone here and he told me, you know, mom, it's so hard for me to find, you know, to find someone who can listen, who can be listening to me and who can empathize with me when I go through my pain. And I feel sad because that person is very dear to me. So I just want to share, you know, while, we are, while I'm talking about this point, please let's be a good listener and learn how to show empathy and do not minimize someone who have gone through emotional struggles. Yeah, even in the Bible, it says in James 5, 16, you know, we got to share our sin to one another so, and pray for one another so that we can be healed. And these are some of other things that we, I do, exercise daily, six days a week. And I, go, I like to go hiking to the nature and I like to relax sometime and do some fun things like cooking and baking, pursue my interests. I'm taking a course that I like now. And I love to listen to this worship, to beautiful worship music. And recently, a sister introduced me to a very beautiful music. And a fun time, volunteering, you know, is, is, is great and encouraging others. When I have my free time, I like to cook Indonesian food, beef rendang, and I like to invite sisters and brothers in Singapore to come to my place and have a great, great fellowship. So there may be more lists than this if you, you know, that, that you know how to have an emotional wellness. And 
according to New University of New Hampshire, emotional wellness means that understanding oneself and ability to deal with one life's challenges, meaning that having self-awareness and you are able to deal with your life challenges. If you're at that point, you are emotional well, you're emotional healthy. And just before I end, I just want to remind us again, this last verse, my favorite verse in Isaiah, 5, Isaiah 41, 13, it says, for I am the Lord your God who holds your right hand and says to you, do not fear, I will help you. In my lowest time in 2009, when I walk alone outdoor, alone, I imagine that God is holding my right hand and says to me, do not fear. I'm, I have my back. I, I am on your side and I will help you. So I love this verse. I just want to remind you, God loves us. God cares for us. And when you go through struggle, go to God, go to your brothers and sisters whom you feel safe. And may we all be restored to emotional wellness. Thank you, sisters and brothers, for listening. Yeah.